All right, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. I am your host, Tanisha. Tanisha's Reading Podcast is dedicated to anyone who desires to make reading a daily habit as a form of self-care. To stay updated when a new podcast is uploaded, please subscribe to the channel. In addition, you can find me on Instagram at Tanisha's Reading Corner for many book recommendations and tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. I am your host, Tanisha. So this week's being the week of Thanksgiving, I wanted this week's episode to discuss a book about family dynamics and how it can affect your individual growth for the better and for the worse. Thanksgiving is a time for families to come together, but all those different personalities, different political opinions, different walks of life, different attitudes, different struggles, different character flaws, it can cause for a lot of family tension and a lot of family drama. It can also bring up old family drama, like I said, and also reveal deeply rooted family secrets. That is why this week's episode is about a book review on Hurricane Summer by Asha Broomfield. Now, yes, the title Hurricane Summer, um, hello, we're in the middle of fall, but this book for me was just spoke to me so well. I finished it in two days. It was so good from beginning to end. It just hooked me right in. And also, Asha Broomfield, she is an actress. Uh, starred in many uh, little soaps and plays. But also, this is her debut novel. And it was released back in 2021. So we love a good debut. And this was a good one. Yeah, I fell in love with this book from the cover and the quote at the top that reads, Sometimes the storm is inside of you. Preach. When I read that, I said, yep, you're coming home with me. And after I finished reading it, I said, I have to do an episode on this one. This book reveal will contain spoilers. So please go read the book, pause this episode, go read the book, come back, and then we'll discuss. Also, this episode does contain mentions of physical and violence and sexual violence. Uh, as it pertains to how it is portrayed in the novel. So if that is a trigger for you, I understand you may stop listening right now, but just as a forewarning. With that being said, this book details, tells the story of 18-year-old Tilla and her sister Mia going to visit her father in Jamaica, who they haven't seen in over a year, for two months in the summer from Canada. So culture shock right there. She not only finds out a ton of family secrets, but those secrets act as a guide to unlock her inner personal, her inner potential as she navigates both the external and internal storms that's going on with her as she acts as a guide into her womanhood. All right, so the story begins with Tilla, very reluctant to go visit her extended family on her father's side in Jamaica because she hasn't seen him in over a year. So when she and her sister land down Jamaica, they are taken to the yard or country, which is Piata, for, yard is Piata for country, where Tilla meets her entire family. At first, they are greeted and treated somewhat respectfully, but then her father announces that she has to leave them there for three weeks, and that is when Aunt Herma and her cousin Diana start to show their true colors. From hello, those two did not like Tilla, and they secretly started to plot against her. But as her cousin, other cousin, Andre, points out, they're just jealous because Tilla will have a life that they will, life will look completely different from theirs. And they're stuck. Aunt Herma is the eldest of all the siblings, uh, but was forced to take a subservient role in the family because of Tyson, Tilla's father, need her to go back into the country to take care of her grandparents. All of Aunt Herma's dreams got put on hold to take care of the family while Tyson got to travel the world, start businesses, so... That will make anyone bitter and jealous, especially when the daughters of the man who made you give up all your dreams and the love of her life come to town and have to sleep in her bedroom while she gets to sleep on the couch. You know, it's understandable. And as Tilla finds out, she tries to have some compassion. And you know what she even says? You know, I probably wouldn't like me either if I had to do this. But Aunt Herma is just she's a hurt woman and who is just hurting Tilla to deal with her own pain. Now, in the case for Diana, who uh, who is her other cousin, who is named after Princess Diana, but trust me, she is no Princess Di. 
she is the exact opposite. She is the super mean girl vibes. She constantly brags about being able to go to boarding school in town and has the air of I'm so much better than everyone. She constantly brags to tell about being an honest, good Christian woman with morals and values. But as the story unfolds, it turns out that <coughs> Hassan, a boy that both Tilla and Diane have the hots for, is promised to her, promised being you know, engagement in this context. Because when they were, fif- not because out of love or mutual respect, but because when they were both 15, Hassan and Diana, uh, Diana got pregnant. And so in secret, and it didn't look good because both Hassan and Diana are children of pastors in the community. So Diana had gotten an abortion and tried to cover up and keep it secret. Uh, however, Tilla, yeah, so let me just pause right there. That was a lot. So Hassan, Diana had, a, were going to have a baby, but then they decided to have an abortion and now she's back in town. They are in this context now after the, all that broken up. So Tilla and Hassan start to develop deep feelings for each other. And of course, Diana gets super jealous. Diana is in fact screams, Diana at one point in the novel screams at Tilla and says, I have so little, and here you come all foreign, foreign being from another country, but obviously, and take what little I have, you take my Hassan. Which is why in a fit of jealousy, she goads a local boy, Havan, into trying to seduce Tilla, telling Havan, you know, oh, she really likes you and all this stuff, don't listen to her when she says, get away from me. And But he ends up sexually violating Tilla. Um, yeah out of now at now mind you i'm not blaming diana for this i'm not blaming tilla for this it's a whole responsibility that rests on her bond yeah and at first diana feels horrible about what she's done as far as egging it on on but in regards to Havon, but then it turns out i mean then she turns around and calls tilla all types of names calls her a slut so yeah This book has a lot of family drama that stems a lot from bitterness, bitter from classism, from sexism. You know, the women cannot turn on the men in their lives because they depend on them for food and shelter. You know, one of the reasons why, going back to Aunt Herma for a minute, Aunt Herma can't really leave the family because she depends on her big brother Tyson to pay for all the bills and everything. And one thing that I wish women we would stop doing is... um, blaming another woman for a man's bad behavior both diana and on harma blame tilla a lot for the men of their lives and all the things that they're going through and those emotions have to come out at some point but when they do they definitely do turn on each other this is best summarized in the passage from an exchange between paula tyson's girlfriend more on that later and tilla paula goes it's just jealousy tilla they look at you your father father you live a life that they never will but if they wanted to treat you bad for being who you are let that be on their own mind ways god not sleep god not sleep meaning god don't sleep meaning god sees everything we do and say now this quote really reminds me of a lauren hill song from give them father the lyric goes a friend once said and i found to be true that everyday people they lie to god too so what makes you think they won't lie to and on you I am of the firm belief that hurt people hurt people. Both Diana and Aunt Herma are two very hurt individuals. They're hurt because of their circumstances. They're hurt because they're poor. They're hurt because they're stuck in these relationships with men who have all the power and they have no way out. And so they see someone like Tilla who has, you know, privilege. I mean, she's not super wealthy. They're middle class, but they're definitely, she's more privileged than they are. And so... Like I said, hurt people hurt people who in turn hurt more people. Thank goodness that Tilla has a strong-minded little sister like Mia to hold on to. Mia gives Tilla the strength to finally stand up to both Diana and Aunt Herma in a powerful way. She physically beats up Diana and tells Aunt Herma that when she can clean the house all day, but until she cleans up her attitude, she will be filthy. Now here at the channel, we do not condone violence and understand that... But in this instance, with Diana and all the things that she put Tilla through and on Herma, what she put Tilla through, it's not excusable, but it's understandable. (sighs) 
But yes, again, going back to the relationship, though, that Tilla has with her father. Now, mind you, he was supposed to be with them for the two months while they were in the country with their family. But then out of the blue, he just announces, hey, I'm going to go town for three weeks. This happens a lot in their relationship, and that relationship really left Tilla feeling incredibly broken even before she came to Jamaica, and it breaks her even further, but at the end, it does build her back up. Because she really wanted to spend time with her dad. I mean, every little girl wants to spend time with their father. I once read somewhere that when a father leaves, he takes the soul of the daughter with him. In doing this, leaving her feeling empty and unwanted and constantly seeking validation. Tilla definitely has some major daddy issues, which unfortunately is very common. She lives with a family who her father might, she lives with this fantasy, excuse me, of who her father might be. And that fantasy fantasy quickly becomes shattered when she really gets to know the man behind her father. Many times throughout the novel, he curses her out, tells her to stop being a baby, when she's really trying to communicate to him that she is lonely and wants to spend time with him. Now, in order for her to fully move on into her adult life, she needed to forgive him for all the times that he was not there for them, for her and her sister, and did not fulfill the fantasy of what a true father means to her. It all really comes to her head when she finally finds out the reason why he had to leave. Because he had been cheating on his wife, her mother, with another woman and had a baby by that woman. So now she has a half-brother and finds this out not by her father telling her, but by the brother walking up to them and telling her. Now imagine, you haven't seen your father in over a year. You're excited to meet him. You arrive. You travel halfway around the world to find him. Only for him to abandon you in a house with a woman who absolutely hates you. And when you finally do get to spend time with him, you find out you have a half-brother. When your parents are still legally married. Now, a major point in this book is when she finally confronts her father and he finally tells her why he hasn't been in her life a lot. He flat out just says it. I'm not happy. He goes on to explain. Foreign, it sucked the life out of me. It took everything I had left. I left my home here for a better life, a life that wasn't better. And I know I haven't been the best father, but it's me who have to deal with the consequences. I made those decisions and now I have to live with them. I mean, yes, it is the truth. However, that does absolutely nothing to heal the heart of a fatherless daughter. It's in this moment that I believe Tilla gets a good glimpse at her father and realizes that underneath it all, he's human. He made some terrible mistakes and it is just described now that he is human. And there is a great passage that really describes how Tilla really processes what her father just said. But before we get into that, I'm going to take a quick little break, do a quick little product promotion, and we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Ladies of the podcast, did you know that your period is not supposed to hurt? Periods are normal, but the pain should not be. Inflammation occurs naturally on your cycle, but painful periods indicate that the inflammation is higher than it should be. That's where some main supplements come in. Some main. PMS Supplements comes packed with nine super-powered plant extracts and minerals. Semaine will not only help to lower your pain levels, but to also support your body naturally from cycle to cycle. For more information, go to their website at semaine, S-E-M-A-I-N-E, health.com. Also, follow them on Instagram at Semaine Health. Also, listeners of the podcast, when you find a supplement that you like to use, your Como code, Tanisha's Reading Corner to get 20% off your first bottle. Again, the promo code Tanisha's Reading Corner to get 20% off your first bottle. Now, let's get back into the episode. Alright, thank you so much for that and let's dive back in. So, going back to the relationship with Tintella and her father. After her father tells her about why the main reason that he has been in her life. I mean, it's a very selfish reason. Yes, it's true for her, but it's just incredibly selfish. You're unhappy? Really? Okay. But how she really processes, it just shows how much she has matured throughout this book. So here's the passage. My father is a boy, trapped in the body that is growing old. 
He is a man whose spirit is broken because of the decisions he's made. A man with many regrets. A man who finds it easier to blame foreign than to face the truth. That there are no do-overs. He finds it easier to blame everyone else for his pain. Just like I find it easier to blame him for mine. My father and I are one and the same. He is holding on to paradise because he is afraid of the reality. That paradise in his spirit died a long time ago. I am holding on to the fantasy because I am afraid of the reality of my fantasy of my father died a long time ago. We are both searching for ourselves in empty places. Ooh, when I read that, I realized that Tyson, the father, and Tilla, obviously the main character, both start with the letter T. And I think that, that was a subtle way for the author to conform the reader that basically they're the same person. And such a beautiful and powerful way to describe such a dynamic father-daughter relationship. For the most part, our parents, you know, when we're younger, they are our superheroes. They feed us, they guide us, they teach us. We think they're magic at some point. But then we get older and we come to the realization that they're basically just us and a younger body. All those insecurities, all those shortcomings, you know, we need to learn them out and those irrealizations out so that way we can avoid making those same mistakes. It is in this moment that she realized that all the bad choice she made has been from her and her alone and she needs to forgive him in order to move on with her life. The storm inside of her could pass once she forgave her father. And this quote that I just love, I'm going to put this up in my room somewhere, but it just says, sometimes a girl has to be their own heroes. That is so true. We cannot keep looking outside of ourselves for someone to save us. We must take ownership over our own emotion and realize that I cannot control how other people perceive or think or feel about me. But I can control how I react to it. Powerful, powerful message. Now, the relationship with her father isn't the only relationship that helps to shape her into this next chapter of her life. The relationships we have with Hassan from earlier and Andre, her cousin, also help guide her as well. Hassan teaches her how to love someone else, whereas Andre teaches her the most powerful lesson of all is how to love herself. Hassan is the hottie with the body that is promised to Diana, but it all goes out the window when he meets Tilla. Their chemistry from hello is just electric. But the back in your mind, you just gotta remember that if he's willing to do this, he's willing to jump into a relationship with Tilla so quickly after everything that's happened with Diana, you gotta wonder, is the relationship real? Is it the love real? And as my grandmother would once said to me, you know, you lose them how you get them. Also, that relationship becomes incredibly rocky after she tells him about what happened, what Havan did to her. And it's also important to point out that Havan is the cousin of Hassan. So, yeah, family drama to the maximum. I mean, yeah, both Hassan, but Hassan, when Tilla tells him what happened, he doesn't believe her and automatically assume that she's lying. So all that love and big old poetry, just literally passages about how much he loves her. I mean, she, at the end, she goes to him and tells him about this thing that happened to me and he doesn't, doesn't believe her. And at this point, Hassan is no longer the romantic hero in her life. And it is clear that these two people, while they do love each other, at the end of the novel, it is not the love that completes her, but the love for herself that completes her. That's where her cousin Andre steps in. Outside of Tilla, Andre by far is my favorite character. He shows her that deep down she is a good person who has a lot of privilege in her life. And he really unlocks that for her. Like, yeah, I mean, I get you have all these issues with your father, but he's trying. He's there. He wants to be there. Give him a chance, basically, is what he's trying to tell her. Andre is that cousin that we all need in our lives. And he comes into her life at a crucial point, at a major crossroad, and teaches her a valuable lesson in appreciating what you have and learn to love yourself through your mistakes. As always, I won't give out much detail because I do want you to go and read the book for yourself, but these are just super major themes. And it's wonderful how families, well, at some 
some family members like Aunt Herma and Diana, they can try and tear you down. But then you go along and you meet people like Andre, who are in those Andres in your family who give you that advice. Hold on to your Andres. Let your Aunt Hermas and your Dianas go. Keep those Andres in your life. Now, this novel, there are a lot of external storms that are going on. And there's a lot of internal ones. And I find that the internal storms tend to last longer if you don't le- learn the hard lesson of forgiveness. forgiveness. Forgiveness is not for the other person, but it's for you. When you don't forgive people, they yield a power over you that you can never quite get over. Forgiveness is a powerful tool that frees us from our mistakes and helps us to move forward. Because if you don't forgive yourself, you will forever hold yourself captive to the things that you just didn't know. So this Thanksgiving, while we are giving thanks for the people in our lives, also I want us to learn to forgive. Forgive others, make mistakes, forgive that family member that you don't talk to, just forgive them. Even if you don't have a relationship with that person, just say, you know what, I forgive you. Even if they don't hear it, you hear it. And now you're free and you don't have to hold on to it anymore. Because we all got that one relative that just can't act right. You just got to forgive those people. Because understand that they're also human. And probably the reason they are the way they are because they're going through their own storm that they can't find their way out of. So I'm going to leave it at that. And as always, I like to end my podcast with a quote. So today's quote comes from Asha Broomfield, the author of Hurricane Summer. Now, this quote comes up twice in the novel. And I find that when authors do this, it's something that they want you to pay attention to. So here we go. Mom says you get two birthdays. The first one is the day you are born. The second one is the day you leave home and give birth to yourself. And on that, I thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Tenacious Reading Corner Podcast. You can follow me at Insta- on Instagram at Tenacious Reading Corner. And for uploads and when we get new episodes coming in, uh, new book recommendations, and tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. I thank you again for your time. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Until then, good wellness and good reading. <laughs>